Welcome back. Last time, we learned how meshes represent shape, normals, and texture. But how are they created? Let's try making a mesh from scratch. We'll start with a cylinder. First, create a line like this and rotate it around the y-axis. Instead of drawing all of these lines, let's choose just a few. In fact, let's start with just these two. First, we'll create a few vertices along each line. We can connect these together with edges to form triangles, like this. If we keep doing this, we get our cylinder mesh, which we can render with a blue material, like this. Cool. Now suppose we'd like to wrap this texture around the cylinder, like this. All we have to do is specify texture coordinates. We're going to assume the origin is at the bottom left, and the top right has coordinates 1, 1. U increases to the right, and V from bottom to top. In practice, we only have to define texture coordinates for the vertices. And the graphic system will take care of interpolating everything in between. So if the cylinder is defined by an angle theta and height y, then u is a normalized version of the angle, and v is just y normalized from 0 to 1. We can actually generate any surface of revolution in the same way. Let's start with this curve shaped like the number 3. If we sweep it around the y-axis, we get this nice vase shape. We can shade it and texture it too. Let's see how all of this works. Let's draw a curve on the xy plane and represent it with a sequence of points indexed by the variable j. Each point has 3D coordinates xj, yj, and 0. And if we rotate it around the y-axis, we'll get our vase. You can perform this y-axis rotation with this matrix, which performs a sequence of rotations indexed by i. Each point on the curve is transformed just by matrix vector multiplication. And we can form triangles the same way as we did with the cylinder. Now one thing we haven't talked about yet is how to calculate the per-vertex normals, which we'll need to shade it like this. Let's go back to our curve and zoom in to these three points. We can approximate the tangent at pj by the vector from the previous to the next point in the sequence. Let's scale it to a unit vector. The surface normal is perpendicular to both this tangent and the z-axis, which points out of the screen towards u. So if we take their cross product, we get the normal at pj. And just like we rotate vertices, we can apply the same matrix to rotate the normals. The last step is applying a texture map. We'll use the same U parameterization as for the cylinder, and V can just be the normalized point index. This samples a texture image on a regular grid. However, you'll notice on the left that the bug gets vertically stretched by different amounts. This is due to the uneven spacing of mesh vertices. Texture gets stretched on big triangles and compressed on small ones. We can address this by scaling the texture coordinates to compensate. Our current approach gives v a value of 0 to the first point on the curve, and 1 over 14 to the second, and so forth. To minimize stretching, we want to give bigger triangles a larger area of the texture image. So we'll scale point 1's texture coordinate by the distance between points 0 and 1. The formula for point 2 is similar. It adds the length of d2 to the previous texture coordinate, and so forth. When we apply these texture coordinates on the right, the vertical spacing changes like this. And on the left, all of these bugs are now the same height. I hope you've enjoyed this video on meshes.